So uh, in case there's anybody new in the second session, I'm not a student, but uh, student of life. I've been practicing for about 25 years now as an engineer for about a year now with Steel Like, uh, the manufacturer of UHPC. I want to talk to you about innovative UHPC mixing and placing techniques that were used for the repair of three bridges in Illinois. Let me get my buttons working here. Okay. So just a quick agenda. Um, I'll do a very brief introduction to UHPC, then an overview of the project. I'll talk about the repair approach. And then I'll get into the construction practices. First, an overview of, of typical UHPC construction practices, and then the innovative techniques used on this project. Finally, some lessons learned and a summary. All right, so introduction to UHPC. I don't think I need to spend much of any time on this. Uh, suffice it to say, uh, it's a very advantageous material with significant mechanical performance with respect to conventional concrete, as well as significant durability performance. I don't think I need to go into any more detail on those. So this project in Illinois, it was in Kane County, about 50 miles west of Chicago. It involved three bridges, all which were within about 15 miles of each other. Two of the bridges were box beam bridges with failing shear keys between the box beams, and one was involving a bridge deck rehabilitation. So the first bridge was the Scott Road Bridge over Welch Creek. This was a side-by-side -side box beam bridge, 75 feet long, 30 feet wide. And prior to the project and after the project, it had and has an asphalt overlay. Prior to the project, there was reflective cracking in the overlay indicating failure of the box beam grouted keyways which you can see a little bit here in the attempts to seal the asphalt as it's cracking along the box beam joints. The Hughes Road Bridge over Blackberry Creek was a very similar bridge, slightly different dimensions, but again, side-by-side -side box beams, this time with a concrete overlay, again, reflective cracking, which you can see better in the close-up in the top left corner, again, reflecting or, or indicating failure of the box beam grouted keyways. Finally, there was a Grand Art Road bridge over Big Rock Creek, about 140 feet long, 50 feet wide, uh, two spans, and the deck was experiencing cracking, hence the owner wanted to rehabilitate the bridge deck. So these, because of the similarities between the Scott and Hughes Road Bridges, I'll talk about their repair approach, which was the same for both of them. So first there was a demolition, which involved, of course, removal of the overlays, and then excavation and widening of the existing keyways. Finally, in that widening process, the rebar uh, stirrups in the corners of the boxes were exposed and a V shape was created on the, the sides of the keyways. And this picture shows the completed demolition phase. Finally, the, the repair involved putting new stirrups, which you can kind of see in the close-up here, and anchoring them inside the corners of the exposed stirrup rebar in the box beams, and then filling the new keyways with UHPC, or steel like UHPC in this case. And this is actually only the, these two bridges were the third and fourth applications of UHPC for box beam connection repair in the United States. So at the time, this was still a relatively new approach. Now the Granite Road Bridge, it's relatively simple um, to rehabilitate the bridge deck. First, an inch and a half of concrete was removed using hydro demolition. And finally, an inch and a half of steel-like UHPC was put down. So in order to help you understand the importance of the unique, innovative techniques that I will describe shortly, first I wanna kind of overview traditional practices. So this, this will be for deck level connections, such as repair of box beam connections or maybe connections between precast deck panels. Typically the contractor would have to rent specialty mixers, usually a minimum of two from the material supplier. These come in various sizes, but they typically max out at around 0.6 cubic yards each. And the contractor also has to require generators to power these mixers. Because UHPC is typically self-consolidating and bridge decks are never flat, 
most specs and most material suppliers require that the deck level connections be overfilled. Sorry, that they, that they be top formed as a first step. And then because the top forming has a tendency to trap air that is escaping, there, there's a requirement to overfill those connections so that any air that's escaping and gets stuck under the top form is above the cross section of your structural deck. And then finally that overfill would need to be grinded off, typically using diamond grinding. So now as far as UHPC overlays, traditional UHPC practices again involves the renting of specialty mixers from the UHPC supplier, usually multiple ones, as you can see in this photo. These again come in different sizes. Typically they max out around 1.4 cubic yards of UHPC mixing capacity. And again, the contractor has to provide relatively large generators to power these mixers. In order to move the UHPC between the mixers and the bridge deck location, or the, the screening location, typically motorized concrete buggies are used to move between the stationary mixers and to place them in front of the screed for the overlay. And finally, to cure the overlays, most UHPC products require plastic sheeting in order to prevent moisture loss. First, they'll put down a layer of curing compound and then quickly follow that with plastic sheeting, which also needs to be held in place. So, you know, plastic sheeting in itself seems pretty simple and straightforward, but it does come with a number of risks. For instance, as you can see in this photo, there's wind blowing under it. At what point, you know, is there too much wind such that the sheeting is ineffective? That's just a, an open question. Um, if you're doing staged construction, there's a risk that, such as again, in this previous photo, there's a, a risk that high winds could kick up and actually blow the sheeting into live traffic, which has happened in a bridge before, or almost happened, I should say. So then you're taking that risk or you remove the sheeting and then you risk cracking. And then Finally, you run the risk of impressions in your final overlay surface. Uh, a lot of times water is used to hold the sheeting down when the UHPC is still soft, but that water can collect in folds and, and crevices and leave deep impressions, such as you can see in this photo here that are deep enough they don't grind out. Similarly, I've seen cases of workers venturing out onto the overlay thinking it's cured enough, but it's not. I'm assuming they're going out to adjust hold downs and now we have deep footprints left in the overlay. So now I'm gonna talk about the innovative practices used on these Illinois bridges to address many of the concerns with these traditional practices. So for starters, the UHPC was mixed for the Scott and Hughes and actually the Granite Road projects as well <clears throat> in standard locally available ready mix trucks. So, up to six cubic yards were mixed per batch. This can actually go up to seven cubic yards, which means you have a very large volume of fresh material ready for the contractor, for the contractor to replace as fast as they can do it. This eliminates the need to ship specialty mixers, eliminates the need for multiple mixers because of the robustness of ready mix trucks. And if it does break down, another one is just a phone call away and eliminates the need for large generators. Uh, a unique experience on the Scott and Hughes keyway repairs was that on one of the bridges there was leftover material actually from the overlay project. And that the contractor said, hey, you know, rather than wasting this material, can we use it on the other bridge, which was about 15 miles away? After consideration, Steel Lake said, yes, we can. And we uh, adjusted the mix for from the overlay mix to a joint fill mix, drove the truck to the new bridge and then discharged the remaining material with the last of it coming out more than an hour and a half after mixing. So this reduced significant material waste, it saved time by eliminating mixing of a batch and it was all facilitated by mixing in a ready mix truck because of its nature as a truck, it's, it's mobile. So finally, the last innovative technique was not using top forms for the keyway repairs. Now, the, these two bridges had a significant cross slope. So a, a little strip was placed on the low side of the, of the connections, which you can see right here, so that as material self-leveled, it wasn't overflowing the, the lower end. So by eliminating the top form, now we're eliminating any concerns about trapping air. And because these bridges were getting an overlay and the 
overfill on the low end was, was very minor. Ultimately, the owner agreed to eliminate grinding of the connections. Since there was no air bubble filled layer of any concern to be, grind, to be grinded away, the owner said, hey, this looks great. We're happy with it. So Steel Lake was able to help the, grind, help the contractor eliminate, eliminate the need for diamond grinding. So for the Granite Road Bridge UHBC overlay, once again, Steel Lake UHBC was mixed in a ready mix truck. Up to five cubic yards were mixed per batch. And again, a large volume. So as we're discharging it, the contractor um, can have as much as they need as fast as they can place it. So again, el eliminates shipping of mixers, eliminates the need for multiple mixers, eliminates the need for large generators. So um, in addition, because the ready mix truck is mobile, the truck was able to drive right up to the screen on the bridge deck and discharge directly in front of the screen, as you can see in this photo. So this provided significant advantages by eliminating the need for concrete buggies, eliminating the need for buggy operators, and significantly reducing waste by not generating waste by transferring the material to UHPC buggies. So this accelerated the placement. It also had the advantage of really being similar to ready mix concrete. So contractors are familiar with it. And it accelerated the placement to the, to the extent that the contractor was able to move the screed faster since there was a large volume of material ready to be screeded out. At times they went as high as 20 inches per minute. Here's just a, a close up of the discharge onto the bridge deck. So finally, as far as curing, only curing compound was used to cure the steel-like UHPC overlay. The unique properties of steel-like allow this to be possible because steel-like forms a, a very tough and watertight skin that is not prone to cracking. And it, with a little bit of the help of curing compound, that's all it needs to cure without any surface cracking. So by eliminating the plastic sheeting, now we're eliminating the risks of wind blowing under it, rendering it ineffective, wind blowing in live traffic, or impressions, whether due to hold downs or workers trying to adjust the hold downs. And finally, as all UHPC overlays are, at least with the current state of the practice, the final surface was grinded to produce the, the, the finished project. And this is just a photo of the finished overlay. All right, so a couple lessons learned. Um, I didn't really talk about this, but I will now. Mock-ups are essential. The closer the mock-ups represent the actual project condition, the better, especially for overlays. This allows the contractor to get practice, fine-tune their methods, um, and it also allows the UHPC supplier to fine-tune the consistency of the material before going out on the bridge. And of course, contractors should follow past successful UHPC practices rather than assumptions. For instance, overlays should be placed from low to high, forms for connection projects need to be properly sealed, and it's always great to keep, keep a clean site. So in summary, just quickly review the, the innovative UHBC mixing techniques and, and the other practices. So for mixing, Steelic was mixed in standard locally available ready mix trucks. This allowed material to remain, this allowed us to produce large volumes. The material is also able to remain in the ready mix truck and stay workable for up to an hour and a half. And it also created an opportunity to transfer material from one bridge to another, reducing waste and saving time. In terms of innovative placing techniques for the Scott and Hughes Road connections, no top forming was used. This eliminated the trapping of air. And in the end, it eliminated the need to diamond grind the connections. For overlays, the UHPC was directly discharged from the ready mix truck to the deck. This accelerated the work, reduced equipment and labor needs, and reduced material waste. And finally, the UHPC overlay was able to be cured without plastic sheeting, eliminating the many risks associated with that, which I described earlier. So in conclusion, this was the contractor's first time working with UHPC, which did create some initial challenges. However, with guidance that Steel Lake shared from other contractors' approaches, the contractor was ultimately able to successfully place steel like UHPC for connections and overlays on the three bridges. And the multiple unique steel like innovations for mixing and placing UHPC helped accelerate portions of the contractor's work, reduced waste, and reduce the contractor's costs. <laughs>